is right now top priority in the Caribbean. And a few were trying to mitigate import within the Caribbean and in, in order to be more resilient. So how will this, how do you think that could be put into practice? It's an excellent question. And so I've been working in the Caribbean for a little over four years now. And I, I always tell people when I first arrived, very few people talked about food security. It, it wasn't on the top of the agenda. What we've seen over the last two and a half years with the pandemic and then most recently with the war in Ukraine is that more and more households are struggling to meet their food needs. And I think we've also seen the fragility of food systems. In other words, that reliance on imports um, exposed a little bit more as we've had issues with supply chains, um, as we've had issues with the cost of transport, the cost of fuel. And so the World Food Program has been working with the CARICOM Secretariat on uh, five rounds of surveys since the, since the pandemic broke out. And the last survey that was released uh, with data from August and September, we saw that 57% of the population in the English-speaking and Dutch-speaking Caribbean are, are food insecure. And, and those are just levels that are, that are unheard of. And, and so what we have right now is an affordability crisis. Your average household is unable to afford the basic foods that they need these days. I think our concern moving forward and a concern for the Caribbean is that as we move into next year, we'll have an availability crisis. So farmers are struggling, the cost of fertilizers are higher, et cetera. And I think that will only you know, shed further spotlight on the challenges with food systems in the Caribbean. So what can be done? So the CARICOM Secretariat is, is um, working on what they refer to the 25 by 25, so reducing the food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. A hugely ambitious agenda, and, but I think it's an attainable one. There's a lot that needs to be done. I mean, you have countries like Guyana, like Suriname, that have you know, significantly greater production capacities, or Belize to a, to a lesser extent. And then you have commodities in the Eastern Caribbean, the, the ground provisions and root crops. And the challenge that we have, though, is, is the systems in place to facilitate that trade across the region. So if we want to reduce that food import bill, if we want to increase food sovereignty within the region, we need to urgently start breaking down some of these barriers, transport, trade constraints, um, you know, the, the phytosanitary processes for food safety, et cetera. Um, at the very least, to look at a handful of select commodities that can, that can move throughout the Caribbean and, and reduce that reliance on external imports. So with the Caribbean also dealing with the financial crisis and a lot of them are still developing countries in which um, the sectors of food production are um, kind of in their primitive stage, how are we to bring it up to the level in which we can produce um, food that is um, like labeled safe mm -hmm. for all? Okay, another good question. Um, I think there's, there's perhaps a few things that need to be done. So again, I think we need to look at the CARICOM countries as a collective and, and who can produce what and produce it safely and produce it in an adequate volume to support the demand across the region. So that analysis is sort of the first part. But I think I mentioned transport. And it's not just transport amongst islands. In the Caribbean, we have a lot of um, post-harvest loss. So for example, um, if you're a farmer uh, with vegetables or fruits that you're bringing to the market, you may pick those vegetables or pick those fruit, but from that point until it gets to a consumer, a lot of that is lost. And there's, there's little things. For example, how do we transport from remote hinterland areas to the cities where, where more demand is? Um, is it in, in crates to protect the fruits and vegetables, or is it just piled in the back of a truck? And, and so there are things that can be done to reduce that amount of post-harvest losses. Similar with rice production, there are solutions around hermetically sealing uh, rice so that that deterioration that can happen after the harvest 
is significantly slowed down and, and more of what is produced actually makes it to the market. Um, so there's a lot of solutions around that in-country transport. But then we also need to look at transport between countries. And, and so if you're reliant on a container vessel leaving Suriname and going to Miami and then going to other countries before getting to its destination, let's say in a Barbados where you wanted to sell that produce, by the time it goes through all these ports, there's further losses, right? So we need to look at what are some of the options to move food across the countries as well.